As the months roll by, California families are learning to cope with the disruption of COVID-19. Millions of children remain at home, attending virtual classes. Others don masks and go to school with fewer children in the classroom. Many students are struggling academically, and they fear they'll never catch up. For parents, it's a challenge juggling multiple roles while working their own jobs. And for those with limited English skills or special needs children, the challenges are even more daunting. Despite it all, the families are determined to keep going so children can salvage the school year. We want the kids to go back to school. We want them to go back to socializing with their friends. We want them to go back to their teachers. I have a total of six kids in the house right now at this point in time. And pretty much every day is just filled with Zoom classes and homework and yeah, behavioral therapy. Most everything is done online right now at this point, especially for my sons who are my two autistic children. They do everything distance learning. Yeah. Do you want to take your coat off, buddy? Yeah. What's up, guys? It's your boy, KKT. And today, we finna be doing, I don't know, but let's go and look around. I mean, I was kind of mad and frustrated because I wanted to get in class, but it wouldn't let me in. I would blame it on distance learning, but I do think that the school district has to take accountability for the fact that you've been through this a few times, right? So we started off in the March and then we went into the summer program and now we're in this kind of like third phase of it. This is uh, my room and I like it so much. It's just been a, a hard transition as a parent because you're trying to accommodate your child's learning so nothing falls back in their education or their development through a pandemic, through presidential elections too. So it's just a cluster of a lot of things. And from the beginning of August to now, I could say it has gone a little bit more of a flow. I'm just hopeful that things continue to fall in place so that I don't have to pull Adeline from her education. So now everything changed. So it affected me in so many ways. Sometimes uh, the teachers are calling me, you know Juan Manuel is not in class. Juan Manuel is missing this period. Juan Manuel is missing this work. I'm having a rough time and we are not learning nothing. Like we're not learning nothing. I feel like most kids are not paying attention. Like we're not paying attention. Like we're playing video games or something else like that or on our phones. And for the second grade, the same thing. He's one week with me and the other week with his dad. So that week that he stays here, he works more. He attends almost to all the meetings, the reading program that he has for ELD and everything. But the week that he's with his dad, he's missed like half. You know, I'm still trying to get some clarity around his report card and stuff um, because I'm concerned about that. It's possible that I could have went to the school earlier, but then you know, then that would have that would have uh, impacted my 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 work. Every time I go to school, I'm taking a day off from work, and so how I try to maneuver, you know, with that. What I told the teachers is, you're gonna do the best that you can, but it's also on the parents to continue to implement what is required. So our childs continue to have that support at home. Adeline's father and I, we are co-parents to Adeline, positive. One of my biggest fears is if something were to change on her dad's side of the family, would I have to make the, the choice of my daughter not doing school? You know, it's my son's education and I just really want him to be able to thrive. I know that their reading and writing and their math probably isn't where it should be because where they left off at half a year, they didn't get the rest of that year. I'm their mom, okay? So right now I get to be mom, teacher, <laughs> judge, executioner, and uh, it doesn't really work out that well. They go to school and their teacher says, okay, you know, it's art time, we're gonna sit at the table and do finger paints. And they're totally happy about it and they're totally willing to sit down and follow the instructions and do their work. They don't wanna, 
they don't want to do that for me. I'm their mom, so they're like, no, you know, like throwing papers across the table, and I'm like, well, it makes me feel like, it makes me feel defeated. I don't have time for me. Sometimes I feel sad, but I have to do first what I have to do. I don't want to go outside. I don't feel like ready to go anywhere. I had to seek therapy through this pandemic. And it was a hard choice to do because being Hispanic, you, you don't do therapy. You just deal with it on your own. But being a social worker and being more aware, I felt like it was the, the right healthy step for me to go. I'm, I gotta make sure I'm okay before I could make sure anybody's okay. Cause I get stressed out easily. What stresses you out? School and not going out, not be able to come outside and interact with my friends. He needs to be always playing sports or doing something. So now he's just at home because we don't have too much outside activity. With COVID, our, our worldwide pandemic, this generation that's experienced it from four-year-olds in pre-K to high schoolers, they're really gonna be impacted in their mental health. If you're not 100% there mentally, how are you gonna be able to be 100% of a student? I'm not gonna let my kids sit at home all day and do absolutely nothing for months. Unfortunately, we're gonna be looking at a group of children during this period of time that may be a stigma, you know, around them, you know, and they'll, they'll probably be calling them the COVID kids, you know, that we're behind. What are we gonna do, live in our houses for the rest of our lives? Not go anywhere, do anything, see anybody? Be separated by plexiglass and masks? That's not how I want my kids to live, and I don't want them to, to fear everybody, to be afraid. Why can't you go to class? And outside? No, inside. Why can't you go to the classroom? Yeah, why won't they let you go into the classroom? Because of the coronavirus. Coronavirus, huh? And what happens if you go to school and, and there's still the coronavirus? You get sick and die. That could happen, yes. So unfortunately, my mother passed away with COVID, and Adeline was very close to her grandmother, Adela. And I know that seems extreme, but that's the reality.